Hi everyone, before I start this video, make sure that you are a part of my discord server by joining the link in the description box below. And in this video, we will be going over A-Level Accounting 2024, May June, Paper 2 1, Question number 3. This is Paper 2 which consists of 4 questions, 2 of them will be of 30 marks and 2 of them will be of 15 marks and the total time limit for this paper is 1 hour and 45 minutes. Since question number 3 is of 15 marks, ideally you should be spending about 17 and a half minutes in order to solve this question and in this video as well, we will be attempting to solve it within 17 and a half minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. J Limited's financial year ended on 31st March 2024. The following information is available. At the opening date, we have the retained earnings balance and at the closing date, we have our issued share capital which is the ordinary share and the share premium. And in this case, we can see that the nominal rate for ordinary share is 0.25 each. Then on 1st August 2023, we made a rights issue. On 1st October 2023, there was an interim dividend which was paid. On 31st March 2024, the directors revalued property at 390,000. Property had previously been revalued at 450,000. So in this case, there is a revaluation downwards. which is of 450,000 minus 390,000 which results in 60,000 so it should be subtracted from the revaluation reserve if it is sufficient otherwise we subtract the remaining amount from our retained earnings then profit for the year under 31st March 2024 was 37,000 okay so in this case the only share information we have is of the rights issue and in this case two ordinary shares was issued for every three ordinary shares held at that date but in this case we have the total value of the ordinary shares after the original share plus this right share right so it means that we can split this value at the ratio of two is two sorry that will be three is to two because two right shares was issued for every three ordinary shares now we can easily get the value for our right shares by splitting this 1 million on the ratio 3 is to 2 and we're only trying to figure out the 2 part so out of this value the right share will be of 1 million times 2 by 5 which results in 400,000 and this is the value of the right shares we also know that the shares were issued at a premium of 0.1 per share and the rights issue was fully subscribed so in order to get the premium value we first need to get the number of right shares we already have the value so we can just divide the value by the nominal rate of 0.25. This gives the number of right shares to be 1,600,000. Now the share premium will be 1,600,000 right shares times the rate of 0.1, which is also in 160,000. Let's write it down. So due to the rights issue, our ordinary share capital will increase by 400,000 and the share premium will be increasing by 160,000. Let's write it down. So we have our rights issue. The share capital will be increasing by 400,000 and the share premium will be increasing by 160,000, which means that in total that will be 400,000 plus 160,000, which is 560,000. All right. Then we have the dividend of 0.02 per share on all shares in issue at that date. And this is at the date of 1st October 2023, which is after 1st August 2023. So we will be paying the dividend on all shares. Let's calculate the number of total shares. That will be our value of 1 million divided by 0.25. This results in 4 million. So for these 4 million shares, we will be providing 0.02 dividend per share. So the total dividend paid will be number of shares, 4 million, times rate, 0.02. This results in the value of 80,000. And always remember that dividend will be paid out of the retained earnings. Let's write it down. We have dividend of 80,000 which will be subtracted from the retained earnings. All right. Then we have information regarding revaluation. We've already calculated that there is a revaluation downwards where we need to subtract 60,000 from the revaluation reserve only if the reserve is sufficient. Let's take a look. So we have revaluation downwards. 
Evaluation reserve only has a value of 45,000. So, the maximum amount we can subtract from here is 45,000, but we need to subtract a total of 60,000. So, from 60,000, we've already subtracted 45,000, which means that the remaining amount will be 15,000, and this will have to be subtracted from the retained earnings. So, the total amount that we subtracted as part of the revaluation downwards is 60,000. All right. Then we have the profit for the year of 37,000, which will always be added to the retained earnings. So we have profit for the year, which is of 37,000. That is all. Now, for the share capital and share premium, we need to calculate the opening balance. And in this case, we know that opening balance plus the rights issue of 400,000 will result in 1 million, which means that the opening balance will be equal to 1 million minus 400,000, which is 600,000. Then we repeat the same process for share premium. So the opening balance plus the rights issue of 160,000 will result in 360,000, which means that the opening balance is equal to 360,000 minus 160,000 which is 200,000. Now let's calculate the total of our opening balances. That will be 600,000 plus 200,000 plus 45,000 plus 98,000, which is also 943,000. Now let's calculate the closing balance for revaluation reserve. That will be 45,000 minus 45,000, which is zero. And for retained earnings, that will be 98,000 minus 80,000 minus 15,000 plus 37,000, which is also 40,000. Now for the total, that will be 943,000 plus 560,000 minus 80,000 minus 60,000 plus 37,000, which results in 1 million and 400,000. That is all for this part. Let's move towards the second one. And in this case, we have been given the working section right here. So it's better if you show the workings for your dividend along with your workings for the rights issue within that particular box so that you get your markings correctly. Now we have the additional information. The directors are considering raising additional finance. They believe investors will prefer to invest in debentures rather than in ordinary shares. We need to explain two reasons why investors may prefer to invest in debentures rather than in ordinary shares. Okay, so debenture is a non-current liability and debenture will receive a fixed rate of interest each year whereas ordinary shares dividend will depend upon the performance for the year. So if there is lower profit then it might be possible that the company will give out lower dividends. So we can just say that the profits or dividend are discretionary whereas the debentures will receive a fixed rate of interest each year. That is the first reason why investors may prefer to invest in debentures rather than in ordinary shares. Let's write it down, debentures receive a fixed rate of interest each year whether or not profits are made by the company. Whereas dividends are discretionary. Now the second reason is that debenture are a less risky form of investment because they are secured against a specific assets. There will be a specific collateral provided by the company whenever they issue debentures. So it is more secure to invest rather than in ordinary shares. Let's write it down. Debentures are a less risky form of investment as they are usually secured against specific assets. That is all for the second part. Let's move towards the next one. We now need to state three uses of a share premium account. All right, the very first use of share premium account is when we issue bonus shares to shareholders, we use the share premium account. So issue bonus shares to 
shareholders. The second one is to pay the premium on the redemption of debenture. Sometimes additional amount is paid back to the debenture holder at the time of redemption. And in such cases, we use a share premium account. So to pay the premium on the redemption of debentures. And the third one is to write off expenses of share issues. If there are any expenses incurred while issuing shares, we can just write it off within our share premium account. So to write off expenses of share issues. That is all for the third part as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure that you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you are subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.